Carla Simone. Congratulations for the confessions of Annie Landon for uh, BritBox. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Nice to meet you. And nice to meet both of you. So let me uh, start with this. Um, Sarah, where the original idea came from for, for your story and when you crafted it, did it start it off as a romantic drama or a mystery at first? Um, the original idea was probably something I'd been carrying without realizing I was carrying it for a while. Um, because I think the seed was planted by my own reading, you know, by this kind of love affair I had with the Gothic novel and Gothic romances in particular, and the Brontes in particular, particular. And, um, you know, realizing after I'd kind of inhaled all of those books that there was a huge gap in that literature, in all of literature, really, but in that literature that had so grabbed me and wanting myself to put a Black woman center stage in her own Gothic romance. And so when I sort of formed the intention to write a novel, I think that was very much at the forefront of my mind. It was like, I think what you read comes out in what you write, but what I read had this sort of void in it. And it was, it felt really powerful and like a privilege to be able to fill that. I've forgotten the second part of your question. I'm sorry. Was it uh, originally started off as a oh, romantic no, drama so nice. or mystery? I actually remember the minute that the character Franny came alive for me, I could see her very distinctly, this kind of Jamaican woman in this London fog, standing on the steps of this Mayfair mansion. And I knew she'd been accused of murder. And how is she going to defend herself in the early 19th century in, in London at a time when people couldn't really give a damn about people like her and she had no voice? And for me, those were the ingredients of the story. It's like she's in extreme jeopardy, but she's in this society where no one listens to her. No one gives her any credit for any intelligence. People assume she's a savage and therefore assume she's done this thing. But I think even more than that, she's been told she's a savage and now she's being told she's done this thing and she really can't remember doing it. So she's got to advocate for herself. She's got to be her own defense. So it was very much um, a murder mystery. But then what complicates a murder mystery or anything in life better than love does? So, you know, it had to be a love affair as well. Most excellent. Carla Simone, so many things could easily attracted you to this project. So what was on the top of the list that drew you saying, I have to be part of this? Generally, the fact that she was a Jamaican woman in a period drama, I thought that was just like unheard of and like so unique and so incredible. Um, the fact that the story is from her perspective, she's fighting to tell her story. Um, and yeah, I just, I, I was just so in awe of who she was um, on the page. She was just, so witty and was very outspoken and very intelligent and I, sometimes she made me giggle because I just couldn't quite believe she was saying what she was saying and yeah I just thought to, to play someone so powerful but also so vulnerable was like a dream to be able to play. Wow so, Sarah and you have to adapt your own book onto screen how difficult was that? And was four episodes enough? It was, it felt impossible before I did it. I honestly felt like I did not want to do it. Um, I really had to be persuaded to do it. And I, I did not know what I was doing. I'll put my hands up and say that now because, um, you know, I had people read novels, but you don't read screenplays. And I'd, so I'd gobbled down, you know, thousands and thousands of novels in, my, in novels in my life. I had never read a single screenplay. And now I was faced with the job of having to write four. I just didn't know what I was doing. So I had to give myself a kind of crash course. Um, and I had to figure out this is not just writing a screenplay, it's also adapting, which is a particular kind of skill. And I had to figure out what is it that we keep? What's the core of the story that's going to translate well to screen? And what do I have to ditch in order to make it translate well to screen? Um, so, yeah, but I actually ended up then falling in love with screenwriting and really um, the opportunity to come to my work from a kind of fresh angle and hopefully find my, something that would excite viewers in it by exciting myself in it, kind of finding a fresh perspective on it. Most excellent. Carla Simone, you know, you're playing Franny, Franny here is such a complicated uh, character. How did you want to approach uh, 
Franny onto screen. And did you have to pick up Saur's book to uh, <laughs> to help with it? The I mean, assessment? absolutely. I think it's it's really important to um, read the source material because, you know, she is um, a character that already exists, a character that is loved. Um, whilst I didn't approach it in trying to make her lovable, um, I was very aware that, you know, it, for me personally, I, I think it's quite important to kind of stick to the kind of the core root of who a, a character is. And, you know, um, the book was like an immense help. Um, I had like a whole backstory of her life, which was incredible. And yeah, because the, the story is just told from her perspective. I felt like I had so many different like holes that were being filled in for me. Um, but yeah, I'm uh, from the script, um, which is obviously a bit different to the novel, um but yeah um it, from that I just kind of my my main goal was to create a person create a human being um not really think about the exteriors um of course it meant a lot that Sarah um liked my portrayal of Franny but um yeah I, I couldn't really think about how everyone was seeing her it was very much just fleshing her out as a human being and staying truthful to her journey and her story and being as raw and authentic as possible I, I know as an author, and because of the fact that you adapted it yourself, was there any regrets of leaving any parts out from the book? Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, you have to kill your darlings when you're writing a novel, and then you have to kill the darlings that survive when you're writing a screenplay. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot. I think it it really broke my heart. A, that we couldn't actually film in Jamaica. So, you know, you've got Yorkshire standing in for Jamaica here, but also we couldn't spend as much time in Jamaica as I would have liked. I am Jamaican. It was very important to me that there was a Jamaican connection in this story. And I would have loved to, to spend more time there and to spend more time with Fibba, who is Franny's mother. And that's a really important kind of difficult relationship that I think you know, could have been the subject of a full series or a film, full length feature film in its own right. Um, but it was a lesson in, you know, I like to quote Hilary Mantel, who said something like every story is a triumph of deletion. You know, she was the queen of storytelling. And it's true. Like It's a lesson in you cut things away and hopefully it makes what remains more powerful. Um, a lesson I learned early on in writing the novel. And so for me, it, it sort of it was a way of making sure we kept the tension and the pace by cutting out stuff that might be seen as backstory rather than central to the plot. Carla Simone, I'm going to throw the last one to you. Mm -hmm. How how long and difficult was it to uh, work on that Jamaican accent? <laughs> Honestly, it didn't take that long. Um, yeah, I had a couple of sessions with a vocal vocal coach and we were kind of trying to figure out what specific kind of accent um we were going for because there wasn't much references for that time 1800 um so yeah it was kind of we just wanted a Jamaican accent but you know she was um raised and educated um by John Langton who's an English man so she you know has the English inflections on that so she's got quite a posh accent and then from then I just kind of listened to a lot of people that have posh accent posh Jamaican accents and also my family I could um draw from then um you know I grew up around a lot of Jamaican accents so it was kind of easy to kind of you know if I see a word I'm like mm, that doesn't quite sound right it has to be like this um yeah and just filled her out I just kind of um when I got there on the first day of set from wearing like the costume and the corset I think that was the first time where I felt like oh that's her voice and I just kind of just went with it most excellent excellent Sarah Carla Simone Thank you very much uh, for carrying this conversation. We, we do need more of this type of drama. So, sorry, I hope yeah. you get, get back to uh, writing again. <laughs> <laughs> I will. Thank you. It's been a pleasure to chat with you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.